Have you ever wondered what people are doing with their print-on-demand stores to actually make sales and actually make a real profit from them? This is a post that someone made inside of my coaching group. I send mugs like these to people when they reach different sales milestones. This person here just crossed $75,000 in sales on their store and they made this post sharing some tips in our coaching group. You may have also wondered how people are succeeding with their stores even if they're selling in a very competitive niche. In this video today, I'm gonna share with you the trend that has changed print-on-demand forever and given us as sellers the ability to stand out even if we are selling in very popular and competitive niches. I'll even show you today some of the things that I am doing on my own print-on-demand store. And hopefully, like I said, if you're new and you're just getting into POD, then this will be a great video for you. Take a look at this design here. This is obviously a design inside of the teacher niche. It says best teacher ever. It's kind of inside of an apple. We also have this version here. It's got the same apple on it. However, it also has the teacher's name on it. Let me know down in the comments which one you think would actually sell better. While you're thinking about it, if you need help actually getting a print-on-demand store started, make sure to check out my course. There's a link down in the description. It is completely free. It's called POD for Dummies. Inside, there's over 30 videos to help you to get your store set up. Joe, as a seller yourself, can you let us know about what trends we should keep an eye on so customers can buy products in 2024 so that these people can grow their business? Another trend as well would be personalization. If you have a great niche and you're already making sales, you could probably increase your profit by, you know, I'm not going to throw out a random number to you, but you could increase it by offering personalization, right? The idea would be to take an existing design that's working like world's greatest teacher and then to write, you know, Mrs. Robinson on it instead. What I just described is basically the same situation that we have here. This mug is basically a mug inside of the teacher niche. It says best teacher ever on it. We then have this mug here. It says the same thing, but it also has the teacher's name on it. In my opinion, I think the personal one would sell better. It would also have a higher likelihood of making the store owner more profits because they can sell it at a higher price. Both of them are the same exact item. It's a print-on-demand tumbler. They're being sold in the same niche, but one of them has the teacher's name on it. This makes it infinitely cooler. And if you guessed it, what we're talking about today is selling personalized print-on-demand items on your store. To do this, you're going to need three things. The first is a great concept for your niche and for your product and for your design. The second is is a way for customers to tell you what they want to personalize when they come on your store. And the third thing is a easy way to actually process the order. In this video today, we're gonna to talk about all three. Personalization is also something that I am going all in on. A few weeks ago, April 17th, I started a side store in addition to my main store. So far, we've made $1,399.22 in sales. At this point, I haven't done any Facebook or Instagram ads, and I've been documenting the entire process. And the pinned comment of this video, I will put a link to the series where I've been showing what I'm doing with this store. And I am selling products like this. This is a print on demand metal sign. Someone who is personalizing this can add their own house number. They can also add their own street name and create a really one of a kind and custom address sign to hang on the front of their house. Imagine if I was just selling something like this. It's the same niche, it's the same product, but it's not as cool because the buyer can't personalize anything with this design. Basically just a cow sign that says, welcome. Here's the thing though, doing personalized designs like this is definitely cool and a great way to make sales. I wanted to make a video talking a little bit about what I'm doing with my store and also help you to sell personalized products, but I also don't want to make it seem like you have to do personalization with your print-on-demand store. Right now, my main print-on-demand store does not do personalization. I've had designs that are not personalized that have done more than $100,000 in sales, and ultimately print-on-demand is alive and well if you're not doing personalization. Like like I said, I just wanted to make a video here talking about personalized products because in a lot of cases, it can actually help you to make more sales and more profits. But again, depending on what you're doing, you don't necessarily need to do personalization. This is how I have things set up on my store. You can see when someone comes to the product page here, they can type in their house number, they can also type in the name of their street, and they can select what type of street they actually have, whether it's a road, a lane, or a street, or something like that. As we've been doing this series, I've shared how I've been using AI to make mock-ups like this. In a future video, I will break down how I am doing that. For this though, this is essentially manual personalization where someone can come on here and they can tell me what they want to personalize in the design and then after they place their order, I'm actually manually creating their design for them. This is a process where there is a little bit of work but ultimately changing the text on this design only takes me a few seconds. This is the app here that I am using on the store. It's called Globo Product Options. It gives you the ability 
ability to add custom text fields, even numbers, drop downs, and even ability for customers to upload files to your store with their order. They do have a couple of different plans. One of them is free. So if you're just doing simple text-based personalization like I am, you could use the free plan. And you can use the Globo product options app to do lots of different things. You can see that this store here has a spot for someone's name, also a year and a location, or even something like this here where a customer is uploading a photo to actually personalize the design with. And again, this is a manual process where you are using that app on your store and you're collecting the information from the customers and then you're creating the design and then re-uploading it into your print-on-demand supplier. Depending on what you're doing, this likely should only take a few minutes once you get the hang of it. There are some apps out there that you can use on your store that do automate some of this. However, I like to have complete control with the design as well as the actual product that I'm selling. So that's why I like to do manual personalization with an app like I just showed you. If you're getting into POD, then you should definitely consider personalized products. Sometimes the design is great, but it doesn't have enough to actually sell. If you're doing personalization though, some things to think about. Take a look at this product here. It's basically a poster or canvas that has like an ocean background to it. And then they're giving the customer the ability to add their own custom quote or message on the product. Something like this is a big mistake for two reasons. The first is there's really no niche here. It's just a picture of the ocean. They've basically just taken a photograph, thrown it on the poster and made that their entire design. If you are gonna do personalization, you need to do something like this where there's actually an underlying niche. This is a fitness related product. Someone would buy this and then hang it in their home gym at their house. The second mistake here is they're asking the customer to be too creative with this. Remember, people are going to be coming across your items on your store. They might not be in a shopping mindset. A lot of our products are promoted on social media. So when people come across them, they might not have a custom quote ready to upload here. And it might just be too difficult for them actually to place the order. They could have lots of different ideas about what they would want to add to this. But ultimately, again, it's too big of a decision. You want to make personalization easy for them. That's why, again, something like this is a great approach because someone could easily figure out what name they want to put on there. They could easily figure out the date that they want to put on the poster. And then same thing for the location. They're just putting where they live. There's not much thought involved with them actually creating something like this. Success with personalization really comes from you allowing the customer to create a unique item that has utility. When I say utility, I mean that it actually has a reason to be personalized. If you're just selling posters that have a catchy quote on them and then you're allowing someone to put their name at the bottom, but there's no underlying niche there, then it doesn't really make sense. That's why stuff like this that I'm doing is doing pretty well here. And I haven't even started Facebook or Instagram ads yet. It's a custom address sign. It has a niche. It's basically a farming and homesteading niche product. And someone who is in that niche can personalize this and hang it on their front of the house. Something like this, the underlying niche, like I said, is fitness and they can hang this in their home gym. Earlier, I said that if you're going to do personalization, you need to have three things. The first that I said was a great concept. And that's what I'm talking about right now. If you're getting into POD and you're hearing what I'm saying around making more sales and more profits with personalization, that does not mean that you should just start personalizing every single design that you have on your store, because in some cases it might not make sense. And in some cases too, the way that you're personalizing, it could cause the customer to have to think too much about ordering the product. What you want to do is have a great concept and why someone would actually want to personalize the product. Like I said, with my store, I'm doing those address signs that I showed you. That other store is doing things for the home gym. And ultimately it's a much different thing than something like this here. You'll also likely want to avoid things like this. This is a personalized item where the customer can upload six different photos and create a personalized blanket. This again has no underlying niche. It's basically a custom photo blanket. You could get these from Walmart. You could get these from CVS. This specific product here is actually from Vista Print, which is like a stationary and label making website where people can get a lot of different things printed. Essentially, this is like Walmart. This is not a niche relevant product. And this likely would be something that would be tough to sell in a social media environment because again, there's not really a solid niche here. The second thing we talked about was making sure that you have a great way for customers to actually tell you what they want to personalize. Using an app to create stuff like this is much better than just telling someone somewhere on the page to send you an email with their order number with their desired personalized items. If this store was just blank in terms of the different fields here and you had something like that in the product description, it would likely lead to a lot of errors where people might not actually see it, they might not understand how it works and that could cause them not to order. The third thing we talked about was having an easy process to 
actually fulfill the order. Now, depending on which print-on-demand supplier you are using, if you're doing manual personalization, there could be a different process. But like I said before, in most cases, it is a very quick thing for me to personalize those signs that I was showing you that I sell. It takes me about 30 seconds to actually process the order. And hopefully, as we've been going through this today, you're starting to get some ideas about how you could take some of your designs to the next level. My main thing that I'm trying to say is that in a lot of cases, if you're doing personalization, you can actually make more sales and you can make more profits. That's because you're creating a more desirable item. You're creating something that is custom for your buyer. And ultimately, it can help you to stand out in some very popular niches. I showed you this example here with the difference between this tumbler and this tumbler here. One of them is personalized and one of them is not. I talked about how this niche here does much better when you're doing some sort of a personalized item. I am doing address signs. Again, if I was doing something like this, it's not as cool. You might get a lot of people clicking the like button, but they might not actually buy. However, like I said before though, you don't have to do personalization. It is definitely possible to create great designs that are not personalized. Obviously, you need to have a great concept, a great niche, a cool product, but ultimately, I don't want you to watch this and think that if you're not doing personalization, that your store is destined to fail. If you do need help choosing a niche and choosing products and coming up with designs, like I said at the beginning of the video, I do have a free course. There's a link down in the description. It's called POD for Dummies. Inside, there's over 30 videos to help you to get started. I walk you through the process of setting up your store and getting your social media profiles established. And like I said, hopefully this was helpful. Let me know down in the comments below if personalization is something that you might try on your own store. If you have any questions about how this works, make sure to let me know as well. And like I said, I will put the link to the new series that I've started here on the channel where I'm showing you me actually running my print on demand store in the pinned comment of this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.